Okay, folks, look, you know this right here is a winner, right? So when you guys saw the word oxtail, I know you guys was bought in, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a southern style, you know, smothered oxtails and gravy, right? It's going to be like an onion gravy. Now, I've already cleaned these. You guys can clean them, you know, soak them in some water, you know, put a little lemon juice, you know, and give them a little massage and clean them all up like that, right? But for myself, I've done these already. Now, I want to give you guys a little bit of a pro tip. And that will be, you see this oxtail right here? Listen, you could take some of this fat off of here. Now, a lot of people, I know they don't trim them, but I do. I learned this from a guy, his name is Daddy from Daddy's Kitchen. You know what I mean? Uh, he's Jamaican, he showed me that. And he said, man, you could take some of this fat off. I had never ever even thought about it, but it keeps everything from being less greasy, right? So let me go ahead and get set up. I'm only gonna probably do this one. Looking at the rest of these, these are fine, but I wanna show you guys how to do it. Now, this is what I mean when I say, you know, just trim a little of this fat. You know what I mean? We go like this, you can see it, and it's like a harder fat. So if you guys ever made, you know, oxtails before, and then you see a little fat at the end when you finish, you know, cooking it, a lot of this doesn't uh, render down. And I should have known that, because this is the same type of fat that be on that brisket. You know what I mean? That's that, that's that hard. You know what I mean? See how I nicked it there, but that's fine. We not doing a brisket. But if you just want to take some of this out, Believe me, if you did that on all of them, you just took a significant amount, you know, of fat, right? So I'm gonna look at a couple more. Everything I saw from earlier, if it's soft, it will it will render. You know what I mean? Uh, you could take some of this, like this here, it doesn't have to go. All right, so once I got them trimmed up just a little bit, now again, you don't have to do that. I just like to get that hard off, and it depends on the cu actual cut or the cow, how much fat he had, right? But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set these in here like this i'm not going to crowd it all the way because what we want to do is we want to season right so i'll move those over there now check this part out right here now we're getting ready to you know go ahead and season let me get myself a new set of gloves now i don't want to crowd this up because i want to make sure i get them seasoned properly right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take some of this w sauce right for those of you guys are going to ask me what's the w sauce all right i'm gonna go ahead and just put some of this on here like this right now you're gonna to want to keep a, a wet and a dry hand, right? So this would be the hand that I make sure that I put this on here. What we're doing is putting a little bit of flavor on here, you know what I mean? But most of all, it's a binder. Now I'm gonna take a couple of pinches, you know, of the kosher salt. I can control my salt because I use low sodium products and the next thing you're gonna see is I use my, my B-rub, right? So my B-rub, that's for, you know, the heavier, let me grab it now. This is it right here. This is for your heavier meats. So this right here, oxtail, will constitute as, you know, your heavier meat. So once we have it, you know, we know we got that kosher salt, you know, throughout. Now I'm gonna come over the top with it, with a little bit of seasoning, right? Cause we gonna brown. Okay, so you heard me mention earlier that I was gonna be, you know, browning, right? So obviously you see right here, I got a cast iron skillet. I got some olive oil right here. Oh, excuse me, I'm using avocado oil today. You know what I mean? Uh, this right here, mm, check this out right here. We're gonna go ahead and get this nice and hot because I'm gonna be doing my browning. And then when I got these in there, these oxtails has already had been seasoned, then I start with these and do the same exact thing. Now, while that's coming up to temp, check this out. We wanna add a little flour to it. Right, so I'm gonna get in here with my dry. Actually, I don't have to do it that way. I can just hit it like this. So now, we already have it seasoned. Just make sure I have some on there. And I actually picked that flour up that was gonna be for my, uh, that was gonna be for my, you know, for the gravy. So I actually measured this one out already, right? So let's go ahead and just use what we got. So. Got the binder on there, got everything nice and seasoned up. I can see, look at that, nice and hot. Here we go, folks. You just wanna set them down, just like that. All right, so look, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a look at the bottom of them. You see like that? That's what you're gonna wanna have, folks. You know what I mean? We wanna put a little color on the bottom of it. You know what I mean? And that's that flavor. Let's take a look at this one. You see this? Oh, yeah. Now, when I get, you know, color on both sides, 
You know what I mean? I like to go ahead and turn it on this side, not just the top and the bottom. I like to turn it like this. You know what I mean? To put a little flavor on that side too, right? Now, I didn't notice I didn't use no black pepper. The black pepper make it like super dark. And I really don't care how they look. You know what I mean? Once we put this thyme under here, and if I hadn't said already, we doing it in the crock pot. Here it is right here. So when I come out of here, I just start staging them in there. You know, this is like a real easy recipe. And don't forget, as always, the full ingredient list will be down in my, on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. All right, now that I'm done with that second batch, right? I'll put it in there. Now you guys don't have to do yours as far as I do them this way, but I promise you this right here is gonna give it that, that gravy, just a whole thing, just another dynamic as far as like another layer of flavor, right? So now it's time to work on that gravy. Now here, let me give some pro tips. And anyway, if you've been following me for a minute, you know that I love making rouge, right? So that's kind of like what we're gonna do, you know, when it comes to the gravy, right? So you can see I got a little bit of oil, you know, left over in here, right? So what I'm gonna do now is everything is back up to temp, right? I'm just gonna add a little flour, all right? And we are gonna whisk. Now the key is we wanna continue to whisk, right? I don't wanna get no lumps. You know what I mean? So I'll just keep adding a little bit at a time. Right? Now notice I didn't have enough oil in here. Right? So it never really did get hot enough. You know? But I like to start off that way. I could have added more oil to it. You know what I mean? Which I'm going to do right now. You know what I mean? And we're gonna let that, see how instantly it gets hot, right? So we'll just keep working this around. And what we wanna do is get this whole three quarter cup in there. But if you guys follow the way I do it, I promise you, you'll have success. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people have different ways of doing it, you know, whatever they're doing or however they're cooking, you know what I mean? But there's more than one way to skin a cat. But the main key is you wanna continue to whisk so you don't get no lumps. Next thing I'm getting ready to do is add the remainder of my oil in. All right, bring some of that flour in here like that. And now I'm gonna add the remainder of my flour. I just put it around like that. So now I got the whole full cup. So you can see, every, look at that. That's what you want. But I'm gonna continue stirring this like I said, I don't like for it to like set up and set up no paste on me, nothing like that. But I'm gonna keep continuing doing it, this. So what we looking for, the darker we let, the longer we let this cook, the darker it'll be. Hence, that's like making gumbo, right? So if you guys look at it in this phase right here, you know what I mean? Uh, it's really up to you, really. But I like a little bit of, more on the darker side. So I'm gonna let this continue to cook, continue to stir it. You know what I mean? And uh, when I get a little bit more of a peanut buttery color. Then I'm gonna add something else to it. All right, so here's where I add just a little bit of uh, onion powder. You know what I mean? We already gonna put onions in it also, right? And you know, maybe a couple of pinches of salt. But you see that color right there? That's what I like. I like a little bit of a darker gravy. That gives it that little bit more of a nutty taste to it. You know what I mean? And uh, But just look at that right there. If y'all need me to come on over and make some gravy for you, just let me know. You know what I mean? Uh, we can make it together. I can learn from y'all. Y'all can learn a little bit from me. Now that this is, that's the color I'm looking for. We just take, it take a little while to get there, but we get there, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put my onions in, right? And I got it. I just want these to be in here where it's nice and hot, you know? So we'll just add these just like you see. They're only gonna be in here just for a hot minute, just enough to release this water in here. That's why you guys see it kind of like sizzling up. You'll see it start to thicken up a little bit, right? But I just wanna get these on their way to start to soften up, right? And now I'm gonna grab my beef broth, right? And now we add a little bit at a time. And 
It'll try to thicken up on you, but you know what? We're gonna keep it stirring, All right? Let me go ahead and get my spatula. Grab this, bring this around. Right, and we just stir this up. You know what I mean? We don't want it to get thick on us. If you need to put a little bit more uh, beef broth, by all means do it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna taste it. All right, so you guys see those oxtails in there, right? So now I'm gonna take the gravy and we're just gonna pour this right here, just like you see. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up a couple of these just so you guys can see. When I say completely submerged, that's what I mean. Look at that right there. Yeah, that's gonna do it. And then don't forget, this is gonna render down, release its flavor into the gravy. And at the end, we are gonna have a ball, folks. We about to have a Southern feast. All right, folks, now look, let me go ahead and put my top on, right? I'm gonna get my power. Now here's the thing, we are gonna go ahead and put this on high, right? So this is my high and we are gonna go about eight hours. That'll ensure that everything will be nice and soft. Right, so as I come up on, on this eight, there he is, I hit start. And I'll see you guys later. All right, so it's something I failed to say like in the very beginning, like when we were talking about like our cook times. Listen, if you have uh, the bigger oxtails, you know like when you buy them, they come with like a couple big ones and they have like three or four little bit of those small ones. But if you got a majority of the big ones, you want it to render down, right? You don't want to eat nothing that's not like like uh that's not like super tender right so that's why i like to go eight hours and it really depends on your crock pot right or your slow cooker however you're doing them right so i'm gonna go ahead and open this now i checked these already at six hours and then what i did was i made rice stuff like that so we coming up on seven i can just tell you these are ready right now i'm gonna go ahead and just hit power and turn that off now i'm gonna show you what i mean look at this right here oh yeah they they about to break up, you know what I mean? So anywhere from six to eight hours would be good, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna set this over here on this side. And what I'm gonna do is, if you guys look right here, I got myself a bowl, you know what I mean? I put a little rice on there and I'm gonna go ahead and take that one that I was messing with because I know he ready, all right? So I'm gonna drain a little bit of this uh, gravy off because I'm gonna put it on later, but I just wanna go ahead and just get this here, right here on the top, all right? You can see that bone here. When the meat start drawing back like that, that's when you know it's ready. So I'll go ahead and put them on there like that, right? Now I know you guys are just waiting for me to hit it with that gravy, but I didn't want to drown it right now because I want you guys to be able to tell this part right here. I got two forks. That's just so that it doesn't flip over. You know what I mean? So as you can see, when I tell you, you want your meat to be nice and soft and come apart like that, you see that right there? That's what you wanna have. That way it don't chew like a tire. You know what I mean? Mm, there go that bone. I'm gonna leave it open just like this. And guess what folks, it's gravy time. Okay, so look, now that you see it, uh, you know, it's, it's plated. Listen, my mouth is watering. I've tasted my gravy and I probably didn't emphasize that enough in this video right here. You gotta taste all of your food as you cooking and stage it, right? So listen, I know my gravy was right. I know that after it sat here and cooked, you know what I mean? And then melted some of that fat from those oxtails and yada, yada, yada. Look, I feel like I'm about to, you know, like, uh, like be doing a little rambling, like over talk it, but you see this right here? Oh, this is for all my gravy people out there. Cause I know the gravy police be watching me. You know what I mean? They say, AB, you don't be having enough gravy. You know what I mean? So we gonna do it just like that. I'm gonna mix this in like that. And then I want y'all to look right here inside this crock pot. You see that right there? We got gravy folks. Notice we ain't got all that fat cause we did do a little trimming, right? So anyway, cheers y'all. Mm -hmm. Now for a little rice and a little oxtail. You ain't even gotta do it like that. You know what I'm saying? You look, I just go in there and grab some. Look at that right there. You wanna know is it soft? Let's get some more. Mm. Man, this right here is right. Now look, cause we cooked it so long, it's later coming up on that evening. You know, even after having a couple of bites of that and just sampling and just knowing what it is, I already got the itis. 
but I'm about to sit down and uh, finish these right here. So listen, you guys know what to do. Oh, and here's a little pro tip. If your gravy is a little thick, you know what? If you got any, even, you can use a uh, chicken stock or if you got any more beef broth, just put it in there, stir it up, and there you have it. It just thins it out. Now, let me know what you would do to, you know, add to this. Would you add, uh, actually, I could have added mushrooms with this. This would have been nice too, with some like sauteed mushrooms and drop them in there. All right, but, so listen, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And guess what, folks? I'm about to dig in. Peace. Thank you.